What's good? What's up? What's up? What up with everybody? Today we tune in on the Life of Jay Malcolm channel. Uh, we got a good, good interview as you can see by the thumbnails today. Uh, my bro CJ, man, uh, I definitely been wanting people to hear this story. We've been trying to get it together. Today we're gonna make it happen. So uh, when he get here, we're gonna go ahead and get everything set up, and we're gonna let y'all hear his story, man. And this, this should move and really impact somebody. And if it don't, man, I, I, it's probably just not in you. So, like I said, we're just going to uh, wait to see they get him, then we're going to tune in and see what he got to say. All right, y'all, so we tuning in. Y'all saw the intro. Um, I'm sitting right here with my brother, CJ. Uh, and like I said, the way we're going to do this, it's just a full story, y'all. Like, uh, it's more so a conversation. You know, I'm behind the camera and all of that. And, uh, you know, we're just going to run over his life and everything. I want y'all to hear his story. I already heard uh, a brief, uh, pretty much a briefing of it. But like, go ahead, man, go ahead and introduce yourself first, you know, so people know all of that. So I think that that's the that's the first thing we need to get to. All right, you don't know me, I'm CJ, owner of One Stop Tires, Wheels and More, also Mr. Crackpot Man. Right, right. So he got he got two two businesses. Two businesses, so he um he a business owner, like I said, doing good for himself, and you know everybody. I'm gonna bring y'all to this channel. Like he's in the car world too, so I'm gonna try to keep it to people that's in the car world, so y'all you know y'all can relate right there. But I just want y'all to really hear this man's story. So I mean, let's start from the let's start from the very beginning, like like the childhood and everything. Like t tell them how how you got into the cars and all of that, cause man, it just I want people to see the passion you really have for for the cause and, and, and as you said, the problem. The problem, but we'll get to that later. So Yeah man, growing up, my whole life always revolved around cars. When I was young, every time I go to the grocery store, I asked my mama, Hey mom, you buy me a car, you buy me a car. Man, I probably had a thousand hot wheels. You know what I'm saying? I lay on the floor all day, rolling, playing cars. You know what I'm saying? In my head I knew my life, all I wanted was a car. A clean car, a fast car. I just love car. It, man, it's, it's crazy. It's a, it's a bad, bad, bad addiction. So, I mean, so what age? What age around around that time? You say? You I say, were? I mean, probably five years old. Like all I wanted was a car. Anytime you see me, I had a car or a truck, something in my hand, like all my life. Five years old. Yeah. So, okay, so five years old. You already into the cars and all of that and and everything. Now what I mean, what made you what what you think got you to that point? What what sparked your interest in the cars and all of that? I just I don't know, I, it like it is something that always just always just took my mind over. Like when I was young, seeing people with cars with rims, loud music. It just I don't know, it just some it's something about it that just it just always stuck with me and then like it just it went to a whole nother level. So it's just like seeing seeing the people out out in the streets and everything fixed up. Like back then, you know, you talking about low riders and stuff of that nature. Yeah, all the dope boys they had the clean car. You know what I'm saying? I just uh, it's all I wanted was a clean car. It's all right, right, right. All right. So now, okay, we coming from five years old. Now, when the first time? Let me see. When the first time you uh, I'm gonna say you had your first uh. Well, let me think how to say it. Your first run in with a car, I mean, to the point where you know, hey, like I got to have this. Or who, who, who car or what car was it you saw? I guess they were not trying to say they just, man, I got, to, I got to have something like this. Man, what I inspired think, you? I think when I was young, and um, my next door neighbor used to watch cars, and um, he always used to watch all like all the dope boys' cars. He always used to watch their cars. So I used to help him wash the car. So, you know what I'm saying? I used to see, I see him come through. Like, I never forget, I, I seen when he come, came through in the 96 Impala, had the 20s on it, music. And I just said to myself, I said, man, I gotta get me, a, I gotta have me a 96 Impala. Like, I had to, had to have one. So, so that was the first car, that was the first car you really wanted, like a 96? Yeah, yeah, that was my first love. And what, so how old you was, how old you think you was then at that time? I probably was like 12, 13. 12, 13. Then you just, okay, a 96 Impala, gotta have one. Gotta have one. 
All right, so now, man, like I said, he got a he got a real story. So now, CJ, I just want you to take over and uh kind of tell him from the beginning, you know how how you got to where you was, where you at, cause you know he a successful business owner, you know, and I'm a, you know, I I throw some uh clips and pictures of, of some of his rides in, and like I said, y'all y'all saw him on my vlogs if you follow my vlog channel, but he is a successful business owner, so like just start from the beginning. You know, and everything that you care to share, you know, start from the beginning and just kind of tell them, you know, how you got to the point you is now in life. Well, I mean, everything didn't start off with peaches and cream. You know, growing up, like I said, I, always, I just wanted the cars. I just wanted to go fast. So, you know, so one of those things, you know, it brought me to doing some things, you know, that I shouldn't have did. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, let, I grew, came up, you know, dealing in the paddling with drugs and drug dealing and like I say even though you know that's something I did you know what I'm saying at the time I felt like that was the only way to get it quick and you know it, it, it's something you know that it took took a turn in my life and you know what I'm saying turned my whole life around so like I say it, it's like I said I always started I started off you know what I'm saying in the, in the car business selling wheels you know what I'm saying with my cousin the wheel shop so like everybody knew me from you know what I'm saying from the rim shop, you know what I'm saying, CJ from the rim shop. So, you know what I'm saying, but at the time, you know what I'm saying, just working that, that job at the rim shop, it wasn't going to be able to, to allow me to buy the things I wanted. So I felt like, you know, I ain't going to never have any cars just working at the rim shop, you know what I'm saying, right. young, you know what I'm saying, had two kids, you know what I'm saying. So it was like I had to take care of my kids, you know what I'm saying, and at the same time, I, I got to have this car, I got to have this car. Now, so, I, I'm, I'm going to cut y'all, but how old were you with? With your kids, like when did they come in into the picture? I said I had my I had my first child when I was seventeen. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Then I had, I had my, my second one when I was eighteen, like back to back. In the real shop, working at that, but around what age? I st I started. I said I started working around eighteen. Eighteen, okay. Yeah, about eighteen. I started working at the real shop. I worked at a another real shop when my homeboy had a real shop. I worked there. You know what I'm saying? With that, like, it really wasn't about the money because I didn't really make a lot of money. Right. But, you know what I'm saying? I had my other lifestyle going on, so it wasn't really about the money. But at the same time, I was doing something that I like to do. So it just like I was, you know, doing doing, doing my love, my first love, and then, you know, making a little money on the side. Gotcha, gotcha. And I'm trying to I'm trying to pin the, put the ages with, you know, along the timeline. So, cause, you know, if people watching, that might have been that age you had doing whatever you were doing at the time. So, you know, you can see, you can tell them, hey, do stuff different or whatever, or this how you do it the right way, or, you know, this what this the way you go about stuff. So, okay, so you at the rim shop, or uh, you working at the rim shop, and uh, basically that ain't providing what you want to do because you want this '96 Impala and, and and more. You want this '96 Impala and more. So, I mean, what's what's the next part of the story? I think, like I said, um, I say when, when things took a turn, like I said, when I, when I got, I was arrested, you know what I'm saying, and I, I had to go on a little vacation, you know what I'm saying, while I was, while I was locked up, you know, I had a lot of time to think about a whole lot of things, the way my life was going, and I realized, you know, like, I seen it, I was a hustler, you know what I'm saying, I'm a hustler, you know, so I feel like if I'm a hustler, I mean, I can sell more than drugs, so, you right. know what I'm saying, being away from my family, you know what I'm saying, for almost four years, you know what I'm saying, it, it gave me, you know what I'm saying, like a different outlook on life and and the way I wanted to live my life and like how I wasn't, didn't want to leave my kids anymore. So, you know what I'm saying, so, and all, you know what I'm saying, prison, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't one of the best things in my life, but it's something that, you know, that gave me the opportunity to, to get a different mind frame and, you know, go a whole different route once I was released. Right. So, you know, I, I think I think you know what I'm saying it got me where I am going through what I've been through. Now, now let me ask you this: So while you was in while you was in prison, is it anything that happened in prison that that made it to where, or what what made it to where you like, hey man, I'm not I'm not going back here. Like what what thing just really got you like I'm not I'm not coming back here. Cause you know we me and you both know some people they come out and. Hey, they back and forth, man, or, you know, they go in and they, they in there. So what what did it for you that made it like, hey, this ain't it? I think it was, you know what I'm saying, missing out on so much of my kids' life. You know, like, versus, like I said, prison, it, I mean, it, was, it wasn't, I ain't going to say I, it was really a bad experience. 
you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, really, when you get to the point, you just make the best of it. You know, right, actually, right. you know, it, it gets to the point where it's just a regular life. You know what I'm saying? Real life being away, you know what I'm saying? Going to like college, you know what I'm saying? So, the, the prison, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't hard to maintain. But like I said, it was just missing all the time for my kids. And, you know what I'm saying? And get, it, it, like, those parts, i never be able to get back. Like, you know, regardless of where I'm at now, I can't never be there for my for those four years I was gone. I can't never get that back. That's true. That's true. Now, how how old how old were you when you went in? When I, I went I went in. I was, I was about twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah. You went in, so. Yeah. Now, for people, I mean, so how long how long of a run did you have? I say, man, I had a I had a good. I say, you know, what I'm saying from around oh five oh four, you know, what I'm saying to you know two thousand two thousand eight. You know what I'm saying? I had a, I had a, I had a good run. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I made a lot of money, but like I said, all of it, none of it wasn't worth. You know what I'm saying? The ultimate price I paid, it wasn't worth. Right, right, right. Okay, so now, now you know you went away. You know, like I said, you missed time with your kids, and that that got you to the point where you like, hey man, this ain't it. I ain't, I'm not, I'm not going back. So what, what happened next in this story? Like you, you released. You really tell me what what were your thoughts your first day your first day out like what was your thoughts if you can remember like what was you thinking? When I came home, even though you know I had them, I came home. I really didn't have I ain't have a lot when I came home. So you know my 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 mind, even though all those years I was thinking, you know I can't come back here. You know what I'm saying my first automatically first thing in my head I got I had to do a little something and just you know what I'm saying try to get back right and then I'm gonna leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? But once being released, you know what I'm saying, just seeing the way things were, you know what I'm saying, how things has changed so much in the streets, you know what I'm saying, it, it made me realize, man, it ain't worth it, you know what I'm saying? The money wasn't out there like it used to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, nobody really wasn't solid anymore, so nobody didn't want to do their time, so it was just like, you know, it, it's, it's a game that I'm going to lose eventually, it's just a matter of when it's going to be, so I just, I didn't want to put myself in this situation again, so I had to, get, I had to go another route. Yeah, and see, man, you got that. I I respect I respect you for saying that, cause you know some people get on and on the camera or do an interview or something like that, and they won't tell their real thought. Cause it's a lot of people probably you know go through that. You know, I got family too. Get out and you know that's first thing they they think, cause they're what you know. But that's why I want y'all to hear his story, cause it's a, such an interesting story. Cause like he went a different route. So, all right, you you thought okay, that was your first thought going back. So after you decided. Man, this is not it. You know, you see the game different and all that, and it's a it's a lose, fighting a losing battle pretty much. Yeah. Um, what 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 was the plan of attack like? How did how did you get started with everything? Like? I say when I came back home, my cousin, while I was working at before I was incarcerated, um, he, he he gave me the opportunity, you know, to get my to get my job back. So you know what I'm saying. So I got back in into the mind frame, you know, I'm going back the rims. I'm gonna make something out of it. So went back doing what I do and you know with the time went on you know like it started like I started getting like a, 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 a like a stronger passion like before again like I like I was hungry you know what I'm saying I could I, I could feel the hunger so like I said when um, I was able like I said for a few years you know what I'm saying I, I did like I said do what I do and like I said um so he, he was my cousin was saying he was gonna relocate to another area so like at that point I'm thinking, well, I mean, I got to do something because I ain't never had a job before. So, like, going and getting a job, like, clocking in wasn't an option. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I really, you know what I'm saying? I just had to, you know what I'm saying, put my mind to it, you know, and, and you know what I'm saying, figure out a game plan. So, like, gotcha. within a, a few months, you know what I'm saying, I, I had to take the task on or, or trying to put together, you know saying, my life, my game plan. So, like I said, I, I mean, I don't, still don't know how, how I made it happen, you know what I'm saying, with, you know, my support for my family, you know what I'm saying, I made it happen, you know what I'm saying, that I once thought was created. Gotcha. So now, okay, let 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 rewind call. I want you to hit on that. You you said you never you never had a job. You never had to work for nobody. Well I take that back. When I was fifteen I worked at food line, worked at the grocery store. Oh just so just one though. Yeah, so like I said I worked there for about two years and like I said when I left food line like I never I never had a clock in job. Listen, when I was in the halfway house, I worked for about a month right. in the warehouse. But like, 
It just I ain't never been the type like I ain't good with taking orders and stuff. So I yeah do. okay. I'm gonna have to be my own boss. The only way I was gonna make it. That, that's why I asked you that because I wanted you to hit on the type of mindset you have or whatever, and why why you never work with nobody work for nobody. You know why you didn't have a job. That's why I rewind it to that because I want you to talk on the type of mindset and you know how you look at how you look at that. Yeah, I tell you know like it was at me. In the day, you gotta make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. especially when you got you got people, you know, you got kids that, that depend on you. It's like ain't no matter of if you're gonna do it, man. You just gotta you gotta do it. Like, it ain't gonna be easy, but you know what I'm saying? Nothing, nothing good comes easy. So I mean, you gotta just you gotta go for it. Right, right. Okay, so so we 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 go through all of that. Now, the one stop. Okay, what what were the vision for one stop? I mean. I know you, you know you into cars and all of that, but what what made you particularly say, hey, I'm a I'm gonna open a, a rim shop, and not let not let just say a car customization shop or or car detailing. I mean, yeah, he do detailing too, but I mean, what what made you just a hey, a rim shop? This it? Like I say, it, it, it all fall back, you know, what I'm saying with the cars, like anything dealing with cars, you know, there was something I know that'd be able to hold my attention, you know, what I'm saying so it was like. Like what else? What else better? What else better could I do? Then you know what I'm saying. Like really, you know what I'm saying. Like it, it's more than just the cars. It's, it's the fact of seeing people. You know what I'm saying. Seeing cars that you, know, you influence. Like a lot of people come in and they they like man pick me some out. You know what I'm saying. So people allow me. You know what I'm saying to you know what I'm saying fix up their car or, or pick out their wheels or, or yes. so on and just it's something as simple as as plugging a tire for a customer. You know what I'm saying. It all fall back on you know like this. Just doing, seeing my services and making somebody happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it really is like a, you know what I'm saying? It, it really likes it not even like a job. Like I said, I get up every day and I just, I mean, I do what I love. Right, right. That, that's the beauty of it, y'all. So, okay, so you got one stop, wheels and tires and all that. And now, okay, let's go, let's go back. Your first car, what, now, at what age, car? we missed out on this part of the story. What age? Did you buy your first old school? Like when did you? Hey, I right, or your first? Your ninety six. So what? What were the? What age were you when you first bought your first car? Basically, I that think, you fixed up, I should say. I think I was like, I want to say I was like eighteen, seventeen, like seventeen. I had a no, about seventeen. I had a um, a four door, a sixty nine Chevelle four door. My mama bought it for me. I never forget. I, I was riding down the road. I seen it on the side of the road for sale. We stopped, and I didn't have my driver's license. I said, "Mama, please, I want this car." So, you know, what I'm saying it had a it had a V6 straight V6 in it. Yeah. It yeah. ain't had one front seat, but you know, what I'm saying? I said, "Mama, I want this car." So at the time, like I work in the food line, so you know what I'm saying she was like, "All right, I'm gonna get you this car." So she got me the car. I was working, working. You know, what I'm saying I, I, I saved my money up. My uncle, my uncle, um, I bought a motor. You know what I'm saying I got a 350. Then when I built my first motor, 350. Put the cam, headers, flow shifter. You know what I'm saying? Like, any, anybody know me, they know, like, like said from, from day one, my first car, that Chevelle, like, you see me going through neighborhoods, spending time, <laughs> yeah. no license, no insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, everybody know me from that Chevelle starting off with, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. anybody know, anytime they come with anything with a car, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, ain't going to be regular. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go the extra, extra mile. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I yeah, think, that's I true. I take this stuff serious. It, it's you know, true. He do. Real. He do. So, all right, now, when was your first bill? Like, you you know, this your first one you went in on, and what age were you when you did that? And I, what car was it? I say my, my first, let me see, the first car I went in, I had a, a money car, little LS with the European front. And, um, I got it for, for for a good deal. Had a had a little 350 in it, you know, it's spin tie. You know what I'm saying? And then I never forget my um my my first, I you know, I got my first set of wheel on that one. I had some 22 in wide. You know what I'm saying? So back then, the car was clean. Back then, I got my first paint job. I remember, you know what I'm saying? I had, had a guy, you know what I'm saying? He said, man, I'm, I'm painting the car for you, man. I said, man, I'm going to a car show this weekend, man. I'm going to get it painted, though. He's like, man, I have it ready for you today. I'm like, okay. today? You have it today? <laughs> so, I mean, he left. He, he took the car with him. I got out of work. He done painted it. I mean, the paint was yeah. still wet. Like, you can, the fingerprint, you touch the car, the car still wet. But you know what I'm saying? I'll ride. You know what I'm saying? That's all I wanted. I want to have me some music, some right. pipes, and some rims. That's all I wanted. Paint so dry. Well, it made no sense. But so, I was happy. <laughs> now, that first, that first bill, now how much would you say you had in that one? That first bill? I mean, back then, man, like, it, it was things like, 
And I bought the car from my homeboy. I think I gave him twenty hundred dollars for the car. The car was clean. Right. I probably paid five hundred, four five hundred for a paint job. You know, so I work in the rim shop. So yeah. the twenty two yeah. ND, I think like I said, I probably, I probably paid seven eight hundred dollars for them. You know, what I'm saying it, it, it really really costly back then. Yeah, yeah, that's you know true. It's true. It ain't take a lot. And I just I'm asking the reason I'm asking call. I want people to put all this together to see like how you came up from then to now. Like with what you're doing and what you're able to do or whatever, and it, and it just I want people to see the hard work. So I want them kind of we going through this story. I want them to paint a picture of you know how you got to where you at in your life. That's why I'm asking these questions and stuff. So and then my, my next I bought I bought another guy bought a cutlass, eighty six cutlass European front. I'm talking about flawless man. I think I paid like my product. I gave my my partner probably like seven thousand for the car. Right. You know what I'm saying? I put the twenty two with the spindles. You know what I'm saying? I had the 350 with the cam. It wasn't fast, man. It wasn't spin the tire. But, you know what I'm saying? It sounded, <laughs> sounded, sounded clean. Good. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, like I went from there. Like, I sold, actually, I sold that car. I ain't even have another car. Like, I sold the car and caught a ride. You know what I'm saying? I just had a vision. I, I, I want something. I want me something else. So then when I just started, like, taking the cost of the most serious, you know, like, man, I'm finna go in. Like, save my money up, save my money up, save my money up. So I messed around. You know what I'm saying? Got my El Camino. My, my first look. My so, third love beside my kid. So, so your El Camino. Now, did you get it? You got it before or after you were incarcerated? Before, yeah, before. So it, it that car been around a long yeah, time. The hood car, for real. The hood car been around for everybody the, know me. Uh, ain't no neighborhood I ain't came through sideways. <laughs> no, the hood yeah. car, man. Everybody know me. Yeah, car. yeah. All right, now, now, okay, we're gonna get back on the El Camino car. It is, it is a special car, but um. Now, what age were you when you first got your 96 car? You said, what, five? Thank you, five? You yeah. said, that's, well, not five, nine, I nine, think you said, yeah, nine. That's when you said you wanted the, um, you, you had to have a 96. So, yeah. what age were you when you finally got your 96 car? I, I, I he guess, got one. I guess, I guess I'm just not accomplishing my goals because out of all this money I done spent on all the other cars, I just, I just got my, my 96 car this year. You know right, saying? right. So I guess it's like, it's like one of my trophies I got. I and I, I, I can understand it though. I can understand it. You know, when, when you when you start doing good, you'll think you'll just go get your your dream car just straight out the bat. Car. The reason I can relate to a car. If y'all watch me, y'all know my dream car is a Grand National, and and you know, it's a blessing. I'm financially able to get it, but I still ain't bought it yet. So it's like, I understand what he's saying, and you know, it's like you say your best for last or whatever. But now your El Camino. Okay, you got your El Camino. Um, before you were incarcerated and stuff, so around what age was the first time you you put it together? Like I, I want to hear now. This is what I never asked him either. I never asked him, but I want to hear the story on this car too. Like how did where you got it from? I, like the first time you put it together. Like this, this give us a timeline on that. I remember. I think I want to say. Well, I I got the El Camino. I think I want to say two thousand six. I think I got the El Camino. And like I said, when I got it, it had a little 350 in it. You know, it wasn't a bad car. And as soon as I bought it, you know, it spent tires all through every gear. Yeah. It, it just wasn't, it wasn't fast. I mean, it spent tires, but it wasn't fast. So um, I, I, I took it to my, my buddy's shop, you know, and I, and I said, man, just, let's just put some headers on it. Let's just put a cam in it. And before you know it, we brought the whole motor down. We went through the motor, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for us, you know, like, went all the way through it, you know what I'm saying? Like, Back then, it seemed like a lot of money. But like now, I wish I could spend that amount of money and be fair yeah, yeah. like well because as I had, I had a three fifty five and dark dark two fifteens, you know, and like in the car running. I'm talking about like I was I was I was beating three to three strokers. You know what I'm saying? Like the car, you know what I'm saying? It always have been fast. Like I said, I think like back then, I think I, they call they call run like seven eighties. You know what I'm saying? Seven nineties. Like, right. And this you know, I, I had like a five seven street under, You know. 373 gears, drive it to the track, you know, 89, I put 87 in it, you know what I'm saying, like, right. drive, go 790s, you know what I'm saying. And, so, and what, now what color was it at the time? I forgot it, it was like, it was black, like an ashy black. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying, like, you know, we start, we, I was doing body work, so it had prime spots, you know what I'm saying, like, like I said, if anybody know my history with these cars, like, I done had so many motors in that car, like, I know, like, no exaggeration, I know I done built over 12, 13 engines, and probably, Probably 15 yeah. transmission, you know what I'm saying? So like, in that one car. In one car. Like, I built a motor. I remember, I'll never forget, I got a motor built. 
and I probably spent man eight thousand dollars building that motor. And my mechanic, I told him, I said, I just want, I just want to drive a little bit. He's like, man, it ain't ready yet. I said, man, I just want to cruise through. I'm just, I'm just want to just cruise a little bit. He was like, all right. I remember I had big old, I had some slits on, big old slits on the back of it. I probably had probably some, some 29 big old yeah. stuff, dry ride it. I was riding around town, you know, just I couldn't help myself. I was spinning <laughs> before you know it. I said, man, you want to race? I, I ain't no no better jumping out there, running, tires scrubbing. I had to put an air shot just to stop the tire from scrubbing. Like, right, oh, lift it up. transfer no weight, blew the motor up the same day. The same you know day? The same day. And he said it's not ready. It wasn't ready. I mean, I ain't had <laughs> just the valve. And then blew it up. So like I said, it went from that, that <laughs> yeah. blow up. So I was blowing, I was blowing motors up left and right. Cause you know I just love, I like the street race. Yeah, right, you know right. I like the street race. You just like to enjoy your stuff. Yeah, if I, I, I wouldn't change that. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Yeah, Lee, that, that's, that's crazy. So you said, you, what was it, 2005 or six? You said you got yeah, that car? I got that car like 2006. 2006, Think of that time. That car you know been around a long time. A long time. Like I said, I done redid it. You know what I'm saying? Like the, last, the first time I went through it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always have, I've been advanced because from, you know what I'm saying, being in the, in the streets, you know what I'm saying, and being in, like, in the real business, you know what I'm saying, I, I already had a vision. I already know what I want to do. Like, I ain't, I ain't going to do the normal. I'm going to take the extra step. Like, you know, back then I brought the car out. I had offsets. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people, you know, back then, people were just, just starting to ride 22. Nobody want to ride offset. You know what I'm saying? I had the right, right. ostrich interior, you know, the ostrich, you know what I'm saying? Like, I spent, like, I, I spent a bag in it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was. Then when I, I got my first 400, I built me a 406, dark looming heads, you know what I'm saying, like, it was fast, you know what I'm saying, like, and you know, it built my baby, man, it built my baby. Right, right. Yeah, so that car, that car has a lot of history, and I mean, from my video, that, that what most of y'all know from, the El Camino and stuff, and all of that. Alright, so we did the cars and all of that, you got the one stop. Now, at this, at this point in time, this current day, how long, how long one stop been in business? I'm going, I'm going on about two and a half years. Two well, and a half. About three years. About three years. Three years, man. Mm -hmm. Three years in business, and then now tell them all, tell them, tell them the story about about the crack pudding. Tell them the story, cause cause this, <laughs> this is a business too now, like. Yeah. Hey, you, th you think you think you think it's a joke about it, but it's on serious, man. The crack. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, I always like back before I went to prison. You know, I I, I my stepdad gave me gave me the recipe. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to always make banana pudding. You know what I'm saying? Like people, people always used to like, man, we can make another banana pudding. You know what I'm saying? I always used to make it. Everybody used to, used to like it. So like, at one point, my, my homeboy he was like, he was like, hey man, man, you start selling this stuff, man. This this stuff good. I was like, man, I ain't buy one more banana. I'm telling you, man, you man, you make some money, man. You just start selling. It. So you know, so I, I started off. You know what I'm saying? I was just making pans of banana pudding. You know what I'm saying? Twenty five dollar pan. You know what I'm saying? Then you know, it gets to the point where I was doing 20, 25 pans a day. I'm like, man, they don't got them. Like, these folks going crazy. Like, like crack for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought to myself, right. I said, man, crack. I said, the way these people buying it, man, you would think it was crack for real. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I guess that's my, my induction to the, the legal crack business. Right, right. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, in my mentality, you know what I'm saying? I use, you know what I'm saying, my past experiences, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, you know, the, the mind frame of, you know what I'm saying, crack. You know what I'm saying, I know, you know what I'm saying, you know, that's one of the things that I used to distribute. So I said, well, crack, I used to sell, I used to sell them bricks, you know what I'm saying, but, you know, the breakdown, then when you make the money on the breakdown, I'm going to start breaking it down, selling these mix. You know what I'm saying, so right. I break the container down to, you know, $5, you know what I'm saying, because everybody was like, man, I buy this big old pan and I eat it all up, man, you going to have me fat. So, you know, I, I broke it down to the individual you know, containers and, like, and like my my mind frame, I, I think in this stuff so deep, you know what I'm saying? I was just every day I was thinking of different ways to, you know what I'm saying, to advance the whole everything. And like I started coming up with different flavors. And at first people were like, man, that's that too much. But you know what I'm saying? Like as you did numbers, man. I mean like the crack yeah. pudding, like you, nobody wouldn't you wouldn't believe the revenue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he 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 my, did. Man, I mean, my business, you be a cause all this stuff like it was so for real. He he like, did. I can I can vouch for him on that. But I mean, ain't no need to throw him outside and stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah. But it, it it's it's a legit business, man. It, it does it does great. It's, it's what he said too. Like I said, you can literally be a cause on it. So uh, I want y'all to hear about that because that, that's another business he's have too. Like, and you know, if um you're in Winterville, right? Yeah. Winterville. You're in the Winterville area, man. You definitely need to try it out and uh come check it check it business out and all that. So now what what else uh 
let me see what what's what's your future plans and all that and well before we get to future plan i want you to kind of hit on the, the type of mindset you had a mentality like what what type of mindset do it take to be in your position called i mean man i believe in uplifting people man you're a successful black man you're doing good and people want to know like if somebody come up to you they be like i want what you have like what do i need to do like what would you what would you tell them I say it just like it takes a lot of determination because, like I say, it ain't it's not gonna be an easy process. So you gotta be willing to, you know, what I'm saying to, to, to be prepared for to take these hurdles. Like it gonna get rough, you know what I'm saying? But like at my point in my life, you know, like you know, what I'm saying and being in between being in the streets, you know, being robbed, being shot, you know, what I'm saying like going to the feds, you know, what I'm saying like really it, was, it ain't too much I hadn't did. So it was like. That right there, it, 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 it wasn't wasn't winning for me. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was determined, you know what I'm saying, to find a, a legal hustle. And like I said, and people just don't realize, like, it just, it's so many ways to get money legally. Like I said, that is, is really, it's something else. But like I said, you got to have a lot of determination because, you know what I'm saying, this this ain't no over the night thing. Like I said, I'm three years in, you know what I'm saying, I, I still got a long way to go. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make a lot of mistakes, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you got to learn from them. You know what I'm saying? Like, with me, my whole mind frame is to sit, you know what I'm saying, to have a good business that you can come to and you can trust. You're going to get what you pay for. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to play no get no playing around. You know what I'm saying? Like, just the good business. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to anybody who's trying to do this, you know, I ain't going to lie. I never talk down or, or discourage anyone for going for it. It's worth a try. You know what I'm saying? Even if, you know what I'm saying, even if you fail, you know what I'm saying, it's it worth it. No, so is it? Is it any? Has it ever been a time you you kind of question like, man, I don't I don't want to do this. Like you know your business and stuff. Or do, do you have those days like? Well, cause I know it's something you love, but do you ever have them days where you you like, man, I don't. You ever question? Shoot, about do you every, do? every morning my alarm clock. Man, <laughs> oh, I feel like yeah. that. I'm like man, I don't feel like it. But when I get to the shop and get it going, then you know, like hey, it's just like you know. Yeah, gotta get up and get to it, cause you know, I ain't got no choice but to do it. Right, right. So it go away after you actually yeah. get there. Now you think you think that the just the total atmosphere play a part in that? Cause you know just having the people come by and all of that, just in, the different interaction with people coming by your business and stuff. Yeah, like I said, I mean, yeah, like I said, it, 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 it all boils down. Like I said, you just gotta make the best situation for yourself. Like you can't allow yourself. You know what I'm saying? To be around negative people, you know what I'm saying? If you if you around people and you don't got nobody who encourage you or, or, or being uplifting, like I said, a lot of times you have to isolate yourself from the type of people because, you know what I'm saying, like a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, even if you have people, you know what I'm saying, who you consider your friends, but like a lot of a lot of your friends, you know, at times they don't want to see you doing better than them or, you know what I'm saying, they don't want to encourage you, you know what I'm saying, to go the extra mile, but like, you gotta they all boil down to you gotta have a good support system because like I said, without it, you know what I'm saying, it's gonna be rough. I ain't gonna say it was not possible to do without it, but having a good support system, you know what I'm saying, it just makes everything go a lot smoother. You know what I'm saying? I'm just right. I'm just thankful for you know what I'm saying, for my mother, you know what I'm saying, my family, you know what I'm saying, you know, they got my back, you know what I'm saying, you know. That's that's the reason why I am where I'm at now. Okay, so you, you just said some you just said something that kind of interesting me and stuff too, and uh, I talk about it in my real talks and stuff. But like, can you hit on your life on? Let me see how how did your your surroundings change? You know, as far as your people and just the environments and everything. Like, what kind of changes did you go through as you you know you started elevating more in life? Like I say, me, like I I grew up, you know. In, um, Jehovah Witness home, so, you know what I'm saying. So like I said, I, I ain't come up, you know, with, you know, so I ain't have really a rough life, you know what I'm saying. I, I had both of my parents, and you know what I'm saying, my life, you know what I'm saying, growing up, you know what I'm saying. So like, I, I didn't have this one obstacle. I didn't have to go through, you know what I'm saying. But you know what I'm saying, just going from 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 then to now, you know what I'm saying. Like coming in life, there was something that helped me help me a little more deal with things because like I said, I never I ain't never really had to struggle, you know what I'm saying. So like. Right. My hunger, my hunger, I still had that hunger, you know what I'm saying, to be successful. But, you know, at the same time, like, I always, I had that, I had that support system, like I said, and it, 
they, they got me to where I need to be. Right, right. See, and that that's rare. That's rare. So, so you didn't you didn't never you never had to really deal with a bad circle or none of that. So I mean, I, I was around. I mean, I've been around a lot of bad negative people, but like for us, you know, what I'm saying family wise, you know, what I'm saying like the life I chose to live, you know, it wasn't I had, it was forced on me. It just growing up, you know, what I'm saying seeing the older kids, you know, what I'm saying. Older people, you know what I'm saying? I, I wanted that lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Like, I never forget, you know what I'm saying? I, telling my granddaddy, you know, I want to be like, uh, you know what I'm saying, a known drug dealer. And he told me, he was like, I don't know, don't, don't, don't say that. I don't know when he said it again. But, you know, like, I just couldn't help it. Like, I just wanted, I wanted the money so I could fix up the car. That's the only thing, you know, I wanted to do, fix up the car, you know what I'm saying, live a good life, you know what I'm saying? I right. did it, it came, it came with the bad. You know, now I'm still living a good life, legit. So, right, right, man. I mean, that that just that just let you know, man. God got His hands on you too, and definitely favor you for real. Cause like I said, you came out of all of that and everything. And man, that that it just it's a powerful story, man. I'm telling you, it's a it's a powerful story, y'all. If y'all if y'all look at this and and listen to this this man's story, and it don't do something for you, then it's just not in you. It's just not in you. Like this this just true like coming from the mud like this this is what you call coming from the mud you know you had to go through you had to go through that that pain and you know that time but you made the most out of it and everything you overcame so like uh you ever you ever just sit back and reflect on everything like how often you reflect on everything like man i i made it from from this to this man i, I reflect every day you know just, i i know where i came from you know what i'm saying like with my mind frame, you know, it, it, it just whatever happened, it happened. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just crying over spoiled milk. When I got, when I got knocked off, you know, I used to be crying around, I'm go home, do my time, I'm come home. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm live again. Like it just like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got I have a lot of flaws, and I still I'm still working on myself, you know, daily. You know, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just a strong-minded person. You know, so I don't really let nothing get to me. You know what I'm saying? Like no matter no matter how what the situation is, you know, you're crying about it because either way. You gotta deal with it. So crying, sitting around moping, they ain't gonna change that. You gotta just gotta go get it. So you know what I'm saying? It's, that, that's the, it's, it's the one thing that really helped me a lot through my life. You know what I'm saying? I got the mentality that I gotta do it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just right. crying about it. You know? I'm glad you dropped that, man. I hope y'all, I hope y'all took something from that right there. That last thing you said, cause uh, that that's the truth. I mean, that's that's just coming from a, a successful business man, successful entrepreneur, and all of that, man. And, Hey man, it, it's it's a really it really a powerful story, man. It got to do something to you, like you heard it or whatever. But uh, is it any anything else you want to throw out there, like for the people watching or whatever? Cause you know it is it, it people gonna see this, man. That I don't know. They might be at 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 your point now. They might be at a point you were ten years ago or something. I mean, is it anything else you want to throw out there for the people watching? Just man, just know everything ain't always what it seems. You know, you may I'm, you may see, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, certain stuff people do as well as myself, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta know it's a it's a lot a lot to come behind it, you know. It's a reward for your for what you do, it reward. So I look at it like I reward myself, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the amount of money I spend on cars and stuff, you know, it, it ain't it ain't normal, you know what I'm saying? I know it's not normal, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really I really got a problem, you know what I'm saying? But like like in life, you know what I'm saying, when you, when you do what you got to do, you take care of business, you know, you got to reward yourself. I look at it like I work hard, so if I want to spend 30000 on the car this week, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I make the money to do it by working hard. So, you know what I'm saying? It just, no matter how, what situation you're in, just know, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's never the end. You know what I'm saying? You can't never give up because, you know what I'm saying, you think about the people around here, the multi-millionaires. I mean, some people it, it, it's given to them, it's spoon fed, but yeah. most people have to go through something to get what they get. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta be be able to, you know what I'm saying? To keep going, you know what I'm saying? And stay determined, cause like I said, can't give up. Like giving up ain't really an option. Like I said, what you I mean? You, know, you grown, you're giving up ain't an option. So you gotta make it happen. I'm just to make it happen. So you know what I'm saying? You know what I do. What I do. Right, right, most definitely, most definitely, man. And, he, and I can say, like, he ain't lied about nothing, y'all. It, it just, it's, a, it's a powerful story, man. Like the first time I heard it, 
And uh, a lot of these people y'all gonna see on here, man, I get inspiration from them too, cause I know y'all y'all watch my videos and be like, hey man, Jay, you inspiring, but I look to other people that to inspire me and stuff, and you know, I keep people around me, you know, they're doing good and living right and all that and all that. So that's why I wanna show these people, let them share their story too on this uh channel for y'all to get some motivation and some inspiration. So yeah, man, that's it. You know, uh I want y'all to hear CJ uh story. Like I said, his information is in the description if you wanna, you know, use it businesses and stuff. And look, what man, what what is gonna take? When 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 you gonna start shipping this 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 uh crack pudding, man? They ship hey, food man, and stuff. I'm trying to man, I'm just I don't wanna get no traffic charge, man. Got the crack, the crack <laughs> on, the mail, postal, the whole yeah. fed charge. You know what I'm saying? But, nah, like, it depends yeah. something like I said, that's what I look to between the end of this year, like I'm trying to I'm gonna put a little more effort into the, the, the crack business, you know, like being, you know, it's kind of hard with one person, you know what I'm saying, me running two businesses basically yeah. by myself, you know what I'm saying, it, it, I don't have time to, to put all the focus in, in, in one and the other, so yeah, uh, it's definitely true. something I'm working on, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to get me a, a, crack, a crack house, you know what I'm saying, or <laughs> maybe yeah. come in, you know what I'm saying, and make a deal kind of crack you want, you know, it's like I said, it's just something like, I know by next year, I'm going to have the, the crack thing. You know what I'm saying? Like take over, take over, like cracking the nineties for real. Right, right, you know right. Saying? So, like I said, if you come to a neighborhood near you, I'm gonna get the track. <laughs> I'm gonna be everywhere. You see, see that trailer? You see that crack? That crack man? You know, crack is on the premises. You know what I'm <laughs> that crack pudding. Man. Crack, boy. Hey man, it's it's a lot of people really buying it, y'all. So, like I said, just all uh, the information is uh below in the description if you want to get wheels and tires too, cause he. He uh he provides all of that. Like I said, I definitely shopping with him and all. Uh, detailing too, right? You do detail. Oh, yeah, detail, detail. Detailing yeah. um. So you know, if you're in the Winterville area or if you're in Georgia, if you're in Georgia, period, man. If you just you know you want to stop by, you know you want to meet him and stuff. Like I said, just check out his information in in um the description below. Like I said, and just if if you know sometimes good to just talk to people and pick their brain or whatever. Of course, you know he worked down. He he, he got to do what he do, but shop with him too. Uh, very, very good business. Very, very good business, and all of that. So yeah, I hope y'all uh enjoyed this video. Hey, we appreciate you, CJ, and uh, we're gonna catch y'all on the next. My.